I'm so much happier with a bit of reflection in here. Dude. So, Sounds so, great. so much happier with a bit of reflection in here. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Um, uh, just check the recording. Yes, we are. Pretty good. Someone was commenting how I really like that pedal show. I, I, I like that pedal show when it used to be about pedals. <laughs> so, okay, fair enough. Um, oh, I see, because we talk about amps and, talk about amps and everything. sound too much. Yeah. So, this will make you very happy. Uh, there's been, in the last uh, couple of years, there's been there was a big, um, like seven or eight years ago, there was a massive push to low gain overdrive pedals. After that, they, they sort of became a little bit not passe, but they there was a, a me too thing. But when you say low gain, do you mean? Do you mean the transparent drive yeah. or do you mean the low gain as in just a little bit of overdrive or both of the above? Yeah, yeah, both the above because they, there's, there's a range, isn't there? Mm. You would expect from the the um, the low gain drive to be able to do the transparent thing and then give it a bit of hair. So do you think that, that started with the Klon? I oh, see, I wouldn't... I may, okay, I wouldn't necessarily call a Klon that because it, it alters the, the bass sound too much. Yeah, okay. Um... But it was around, what would it have started with? There were some people doing mods to like super overdrives and things, give them more bottom end. Because even though the client has more bottom end than, say, your Tube Screamer, yeah. and more top end, it's still very mid focused. Yeah. Whereas people are doing mods and they're sort of taking out mids and putting in more top just to, to make it more equal across the board. Yeah, so not your standard Tube Screamer. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but then. Um, yeah, there was a whole, there was a, that explosion of low gain things. Then we didn't see them that prevalent for, for a while, but then a couple of years ago, they sort of, they started coming back. People started doing the, the more low gain things again. And just recently, um, we were sent the, the Gruta, which I played and really liked, and then Robert Kidd did the Aria, and then the Lightspeed, which I've wanted to get on the show for the longest time, yep. because I, I did... Um, a board for Devon Townsend, uh, um, who is coming on the show. Oh, too he's, cool. He's recording here in August, so we're going to go and film with him in Bath. Nice. Um, he's recording his new album here. And and I did a board for him and had the light speed on it. I heard it and just went, oh, my giddy aunt, that thing sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, contacted Nick, and we've finally been able to get one. We met up with Nick in... At Nam. At Nam, coolest guy. So anyway, but these aren't all low gain. They're not. Are they're they? not all low gain. But there's, there's quite a lot of gain in this, as I remember from Nam, and there's certainly a good bit, of, goodly bit of gain in there. There's so a good bit of gain in that, but we're not. We're not talking about high gain. Yeah. You know, there's the there's the amp in a box type thing, which was everywhere, and these these sort of sit. You know, more. Uh, where do these sit? These sit. In the fuller frequency type things, we have we have we need names for it now, don't we? we do. That's the truth. Oh, let's, let's Every, everything's got to have a name. So perhaps what you're referring to, the Schwang is, Factor. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just like it's a bit like metal, wasn't it? it metal used to be metal. Yeah. And then right. it was this kind of metal, that kind of metal, every other kind of metal. Right. Is so, you know, pick any word in the universe and add core to it, 
and there there is a metal genre. Mayacore. Mayacore. There you go. It, it exists. There we go. And and so it goes with overdrive pedals. You know, is it a transparent drive? Is it a clean boost? Is mm. it a clean different thing? But you know, which family is it in? So, what are we doing? We're going. Here's a bunch of new overdrive pedals that you might like, basically. Well, th there's these pedals specifically. Um, there's there's quite a bit of buzz about. There's a bit of buzz in this room. There's I can tell you. Yes, there is a bit of buzz in the room. I'm I'm very excited to um, to try these out. I've the only one I don't I'm not really familiar with is the White Rabbit. So maybe we should start there. Okay, fine. I might, I might have to get a piece of paper out. So this isn't a pick and mix, because I think we're going to get into a bit more depth than we would with a pick and mm. mix, and they are all specifically overdrive, so it's their themed. Amps today, Victory Sheriff 44. Sheriff 44. Is Malcolm Young in the room? <laughs> No, but I'll tell you what, the last person to play this guitar was Simon Neal. Here we go. And this is, <laughs> sorry, I'm um, saying that name a lot. I can't pop Angus by, uh, can't pop Malcolm because I never, never, got, to, never got to meet uh, him. No. Uh, yes, so Simon was using this on, um, uh, when it was recording the, like, the soundtrack they're doing. Have I told you about this? You have. Right. <laughs> you have. Carry on. All right, so <laughs> that's, that's the, um, that's the Marshall. And no, it's this, not. Sorry, this is the Sheriff 44. This is the Fender. And together. That's a great sound. It's Ginagoras. Right. Pokey those pickups, aren't they? Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Right, white rabbit then. So this piqued my interest. We get loads of emails and uh, contact people going, can I send you my overdrive pedal? And the first question is, Usually, is it some sort of TS-808 clone? The best TOS-808 clone you've ever heard. It's like, well, yeah, okay, okay. We it, That goes somewhere down the list. But this guy, Marshall Terry, uh, from um, America somewhere, um, terryaudio.com, he got in touch and he said, no, no, I think, I think you might like it. And it's a uh, unique bias circuit for the transistors. The rabbit warms up like a tube amp when first powered on and plugged in. This warm up lasts about 20 to 30 seconds and is fully settled in about a minute. Right, okay. Um, I thought this was in the kind of Hudson Broadcast okay. realm because it's a preamp. When I watch Marshall, uh, Marshall's uh, demo, mm -hmm. he uses it on acoustic guitar, wow. on bass. I think he even uses it on the drums. So it's like okay. it's a bit like a preamp channel okay, as cool. far as I understand. I wanted a clean boost that also did subtle smoothing of attack while keeping full harmonics. There you go. Does that, that, that rings a bell? Um, and a boost that isn't clean all the way and breaks up in tandem with the first preamp stage tube of a tube amp. Okay. Voila, we have those. Uh, that's the red mode. That's the red mode, yep. However, I also wanted a unity gain mode that imparts a tone and colour without losing the boost opportunity for the pedal. So basically, you just it's the always on mode. Okay. Should right. we just get into it and listen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue mode is the from right, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So that's the unity gain mode. Yep. Yeah. Which and is then, blue. Which is blue. And then there's red. Yep. Final thing just to mention, the last thing about the rabbit is that the volume controls are actually different types of circuit gain. Neither of them are classic shunt to ground. Okay. Volume control, like an amp has. One is a whole op amp orientated. The other is a transistor cathode bias. Okay. Okay, that makes sense to me just about. So one's an op amp, one's a transistor. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got them, they work together. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Okay, go on then. 
So, uh, both amps on together, yeah? We'll leave them on together? Yeah, yeah, let's, and then if we feel the need to... Separate, okay. ...go Fendery and Victory stroke marshall we will. Right, so this is the, this is the blue side, so... Yep. Oh, it's compressing. And the red side. I think that's more headroom than I've heard in any pedal ever, in terms of volume boost. That's okay. Um, so that's the transistor side, obviously, and that's right. the op amp side, I think. I'm guessing because when you do that, it goes, it biases the transistor. Right, crazy, does it? Go on, play. Uh, yeah, it kind of goes into meltdown. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got the blue. So that, and this is the volume for this. That's the gain. This is the volume for the red side. What I was driving at was, it's too blooming loud. Right. So we'll turn the amps down. Okay. <laughs> side for me. Um. It does have that broadcast thing about it, doesn't it? A little bit. Mm. Just the way it breaks up. The clean, the clean boost in it is much more though. Mm. So the broadcast is, does a reasonable clean boost, but that's got. Blimey, O'Reilly! I mean, we had to. It's absolutely kicking those amps. Yeah, yeah, right. Really. Massive. I wish Simon was here. Simon's not here today, by the way. Catherine is uh, doing the cameras today because Simon um, went on holiday. He, yes, his his 
his union mandated holiday. Yeah. <laughs> no, he deserved a holiday. He did. The boy works hard. Um, <laughs> the exact, the tiny little area where it goes. Ah! That is crazy amount of um, gain out, isn't it? Yeah. It's wow. unique. It's unique. Doesn't doesn't kind of feel like it feels much more ampy than pedally to me, which I ter is a terrible cliche. But it feels like a preamp. Feels like a, a just in the response. Preamp channel is what it feels like. Yeah. Right. Wow. Very interesting. Wow. What a way to kick off. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I think we should use that more. Um, but I think we need to spend some more time with it because what it's doing is kicking the amp so, so hard, hard. Uh, that. We're having to be up and down with volume and everything, and that's slightly problematic. Mm. Uh, right, move on then. Cool. All right, the new aria from Mr. Robert Keeley. Um, now, this is really interesting. He's got his world-famous Keeley compressor and uh, an overdrive in one pedal, and you can then top the order compressor into overdrive, overdrive into compressor. Nice. Yeah. Um, it's a sexy looking pedal. It is. You know. Um, right, so let's have a listen. Let's go with the drive section first. Wow, that is mid, 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 mid. Mm -hmm. So, interesting, so the, the, the tone, the, the mid shape is there, and the tone just adds either a little bit of sizzle, or takes a sizzle off the top of that, this totally mid-range, mid-pushing overdrive. Yeah. And you've got two, you've got the low and a high gain section, so this is the moment on low. I just hear that into the two different amps a sec because yep. it's I'm astonished at how much mid-range there is in that. Okay, that's the um, victory. Fender. It's really pushing the mids in the fender, isn't it? Yeah. Really bringing it out. So the low, the low high switch doesn't just change the gain rate, it changes the EQ as well. Quite significantly. Yeah, so in the high... Just hear that into the victory a sec. Thank 
There we go. Four weeks not being out of its case. <laughs> it was in tune. Another two weeks, it was in tune. It's finally gone out of tune. Right. I won't subject to the whole of YouTube to me tuning up. Um, wow. Uh, lesson one, use two amps. Lesson two, <sighs> buy a Gretsch. My goodness. That sounds massive. Doesn't sound great. What a great guitar. <sighs> been a while since we've seen that. I, yeah, I, one of the reasons, um, to be honest, is that the guitar spends a lot of time with me at home and sometimes I forget to bring it in. But I do love this guitar, it does sound wonderful. You were struggling a bit with tuning as well, weren't you? I'm struggling a bit Let's with tuning, honest. yep. Um, I have um, put a little bit of the that old pencil trick yeah. under here um, and a little bit of that um, What's that? Uh, nut sauce? No, it's not, it's not nut sauce. I'm using that fret strings. Uh, oh what's yeah, it called? fast fret. Fast fret. Yeah. Just a little bit on here. Seems to have sorted it out. And also, I've come to understand that it's not a Floyd Rose. And I can't <laughs> pick it up at this and start doing that stuff. But um, look, magnificent sounding guitar. <laughs> If I add the compressor for a bit of boost. Fatness. Two things. One, it's nice to play loud. Two, we've got some new reflective panels at the back. And if you want to find out more about those, watch last week's show. Mm. Um, I'm so much more enjoying the sound of this room there you now. Go. Yeah. How weird. I can, I can perceive much more. Higher. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's wow. so cool. What a difference yeah. going from the strap uh, into the two amps with humbuckers. It's just kicking it really hard. Yeah. Um, what does the compressor sound like on its own? Does it presumably you can have the compressor on its yes, own? Yes, yes, absolutely. Pretty squashy. Yeah. Yeah, but you've got the blend control on it so that you can make it, you know, less squashy. But there's also the tone control on it, which is really cool. So you can shape the, the tone of the sustain. So is actually adding top end in, is it?
killer. Um, before and after. Baby. One enables you to retain a bit more front end, the other one less so. Yeah. Wow. But that's really like, cool. Yeah, the, the two different shapes with the low and high, I wasn't expecting that. Not least that normally in low and a high mode, when you flick to the <coughs> high mode, you get loads of extra volume and mm. all that. But that seems to retain uh, a volume level. So yeah. one's kind of mid boosty and cleaner and one is scoopier and yeah. uh, fuller range. Very cool. Yeah, loads of gain too. Very cool. Ah, so imagine if you're using the compressor as a boost and then you've got the option of using the mid-range as a mid-range boosty thing as well, apart from just having an overdrive circuit. It gives you a choice of boost. You can either use the compressor as a boost or use the, a mid-range boost. I wonder if, you, if you've got your high-ish head remount, which both of these are, mm -hmm. and you're playing your overdrive there. <laughs> If you could use the compressor to kind of simulate what would happen in a more driving amp, so you just yes, to, yeah, absolutely. So you just set up a bit more, a bit more sustain. Sorry, I'm going to keep playing that blue John Mayer song. Um, but look, you just put a little bit of hair, a little bit of sustain on there, like, you know, not a great deal. Sort of blend halfway and then boost. And listen to that. This is awesome. I think we're going to get to those other four pedals, mate.
That's very cool. It's I tell you, I think even though it's got all the high gain in it, where that where that would be really popular, I think, is single coil players. Because mm. for for a minute when we started playing it, I was thinking, ah, this is working much better with humbuckers than single coils. Mm. But as coming back to the single coil guitars, if you're using a Fendery type amp uh, and you've got single coils, you use the nice mid pushy, yeah, 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 yeah boosty yeah, just yeah, for yeah, a little yeah. bit more, and then the the compressor. <laughs> Just gives you more again. So for for all of you guys who don't like a lot of high gain, who just want that nice single coil sound but louder and a bit more sustaining, mm. I think it works as well for that as it did for that crazy sound with the three three five and the Gretsch. Very cool, killer. Took a minute. Yeah, yeah. That's, Took a minute yeah, yeah. to dial it. Yeah, very good. Okay, right. We're gonna have to speed up a bit. Speed up. Well, I think the, the, the next four are sort of more straightforward. I I, I think. <laughs> You know these the free the tone pedals, Bell and Artists. Yes. So take you, me through them. Uh, Yuki Hayashi and I'm just going to struggle for the gentleman's name, which I'm going to bring to mind in a minute. Hero, H I R O. Um, <sighs> I would love to be called Hero. Wouldn't it be great? And uh, so Yuki Hayashi, who used to be at um, Providence years ago, oh okay, and right. for many many years is is now free the tone and. Yuki made Matt Schofield signature overdrive. Okay, um, great pedal. He was behind uh, the SOV, which was that high headroomy mm -hmm. voltage charge pump, great mm -hmm. dynamic overdrive type thing. Um, and he makes loads of really, really lovely pedals. Not two, not least two that would never leave my big board, or at least rarely leave my big board. The Tri Avatar Chorus and the Flight Time Delay. Delay. Mm -hmm. So really lovely analog dry throughs, all of that, all of that. Really, really, really lovely stuff. This is a new look for them. Um, and there's two. One is So Say more Marshally. Okay. And one is So Say more Fendery. Okay. Super simple overdrive pedals. They weigh about 17 tons. tons. Yeah. So um, that means they're good quality. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember as a kid buying a microphone, <laughs> going into the shop, going, yeah, I love that one. heavier one. Yeah. It's full of lead. Um, <laughs> um, why don't we start with the string slinger? Okay. Should we try it into the into the fender first? Yeah. Why not? Okay. There you go. Why so, not? There's the fender. <laughs> So it's supposed to, I mean, Yuki says it, it, it's like an overdriving Fender-y type amp. Okay. Um, yeah. I want to hear that into the Marshall though. So Marshall. It's a victory. Sorry, so I want to hear that it's into a the victory. You can tell why I'm confused. Yeah. Get that, you'll just hear the victory by itself. Doesn't second. look anything like a Marshall at all, does it? It's a different take on it because it's not tube screamery. No, it's just it actually does sound a bit more like the amps character of Overdrive. How interesting! Thank you. 
terrible. Um, <laughs> Shut up. It's been a long time. That's awesome. It's been a long time since I played any of that oh, stuff. Oh man, that's amazing. And E flat would really bring it out. Have a have a. It's amazing. Um, it's so not too screamery. It's it, it's not that at all, is it? No, because I think I mean, for having spoken to Yuki, I think it's more about the amp type overdrive than the tube screamer going into, into the amp. Right. I think it's that. <laughs> Contains that on the top. Mm. Quite cool. In fact, extremely cool. Screaming at the at the screens now. Play the same guitars. It's too confusing. No, they're not. No, normally they're screaming. Please, can you play some humbuckers instead? Of oh, the okay. Verse. All right. Sorry. No, it's great. I think it shows it shows the versatility of it. Um, I really like it. I really like that. Okay. Okay. So to contrast that, so that was supposed to be Fender ampy. Right. Uh, Fire Mist is more Marshally ampy. So we, I guess we should be expecting a different mid-range character, a different game character. Tide of bottom end. Uh, <laughs> Come on then. I just remind everyone this is the just the S by themselves. Oh, this is the pedal. <laughs> 
Man alive. Ah, that, that, that chewy top end. That's amazing. My giddy up! Wow. Okay. Killer. Killer. I mean, both killer, but my goodness. That, um, that fine mist is awesome. It's funny, isn't it? Because I think, you know, the, the explicitly, they're saying in their marketing, and Yuki certainly said to me, you know, it's designed to sound like a Fender or a Marshall amp, and when overdriving. And I know we've been sniffy about that before because no pedal ever sounds like an amp. No. It physically can't. It's not possible. But there's a lot of goodness in there. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really impressed. And I, I love where the EQ is in it as well because it doesn't... Yeah. Quite often, I had this discussion recently with a few people about martially sounding pedals. And there's a difference between what a, mar a crank marshal actually sounds like and what a pedal version of it sounds like. Because normally they scoop out a lot of the mid, they make it really friendly, they make it sound all gainy and amazing so that when you play it in the guitar shop it sounds, you know, it sounds like, whoa man, that yeah, sounds yeah. massive. And then you get it in a band and it's just gone. Yep. That doesn't feel like that. That feels like it has those upper mids and the treble presency character of it in yeah. order for it to cut. But there's that initial attack thing that's really unique to sort of cranked marshals, mm. um, so I, I call it chewy because there's plenty of it's like it's like the bite of a really crisp apple, <laughs> right? It goes, goes, and it's like that first millisecond, yeah. and there's plenty of top in there, but there's it, it's instantly into um, sort of limiting and sustaining, but just that, yeah, yeah. but just that first milliseconds, and it's um, it's like as soon as you hear it, you know it. And yeah, that's got that thing in it. It's so cool. Very nice. I really like it. Very okay. Nice. Let's move on. Greuter. Greuter. Austrian. Um, yeah, so we were sent this. Um, have we got any information on this or have you? Uh, I've, I've memorized everything. It's in your brain. It is in my brain. So are we right um, about Austrian or is it Swiss? Uh, yes. Um, so <laughs> basically. Our apologies to Greuter. Yes, but thank you for the, for the lovely t-shirts that came with the pedal. <laughs> right, um, so the two switches on the side, you've got a um, sort of a higher gain, um, lower gain mode, and then a, a bass cut. So, yeah. The, okay. the, the, yeah, so this is, the, this is the lower gain.
feels like a really small amp driving super hard. Right. Tremendous amount of compression right. on there, is there? It feels like it. I see what's interesting about that. Mm. Number one, feel those pots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're lovely. It looks pretty well made. Yeah, yeah. I think not too many corners cut there. Um, staggering range of dynamic in terms of what you feel through the guitar. Mm. So there's there's a ton of, headroom, ton of volume in there. So you could turn the master up low and the gay down low. Master up high and the gain down low. Yeah, sure, okay. And you've got pretty quick attack, mm. but it does feel dynamic under the fingers. Then when you get into um, overdrive, it actually does have that dying amp compression character. Yeah, yeah. Were you Could, feeling that? Yeah, or? yeah. Just, just have a play for me. So, oh, have it. Uh, let me just switch guitars a sec. You heard okay. the strat a second ago. So try something different. There's three positions on that bass switch, so I wonder if it's um, all the way there. The middle one seems to be no bass boost or okay. some sort of bass cut, and then the others are two different types of bass boost, I think. All the way down is the most dramatic one. Yeah. That's huge. So just play for us. hopelessly out of tune and it's causing me trouble.
different bottom end in that. It's so big. Oh, yeah, it's in the middle, so I've taken off yeah. as much as I could. Yeah, but it's it's huge. I love it. It's really nice. Yeah, where does that sit then? So it's it's nothing like a tube screamer. No, no, literally it's the nothing. Antithesis like it at of all. a tube screamer. It's nothing like a DS one. No, it has that kind of compression element in the game if you want it. There's. Do you remember when we were here last week and we had the Blues Junior cranked? Yeah. And the Blues Junior, when you crank it, the mids don't go crazy, but the bottom end is still big, and that, that there's something that happens with the top end. Yeah. That's similar to that. Yeah, I mean, I'd liken it to a, you know, an older Fender amp in that respect, mm, like a. But definitely a Fendery type thing. Yeah, like, yeah. A, and as it's as it's starting to give up and sounding great, in that really pushed, and there is a bit of that feel under the fingers as well. Yeah, really nice. Really? Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Light I've, speed, old favorite. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> every time I've heard this, I've just gone, whoa. Um, right. No, no so, pressure then. No, no pressure. Right. Again. So amazing that is the ultimate more pedal yeah when you as you started to play there i turned it on and off and it's kind of keeps all the you know all those cliches every insert cliche here keeps the character of the guitar keeps mm. the character of the amps ish and then just adds this lovely furry warming insert adjectives here just adds it all around the edge Amazing. Have a go on that, man. That's okay, incredible. hang on. I don't know if this guitar's in tune. For everyone screaming, oh, there we go. Everyone screaming at the camera now, this guitar features in another video. But and I've been picking up and putting down guitars all day thinking, God, I should play that. I have to tune it. It says in the manual, page one. Tune guitar. Actually, I did... I just put some new strings on, which... Well, in, there is going to be a video that's predominantly about this guitar, um, during which I explain why I've put new strings on it. Man, it's as white as a Love Islander's teeth. That's like a metallic white, pearly. No, 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 only in that bit there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to make the rest of that video in a minute. Uh, right. strings. Do you feel the presence of John? I do. Always feel the presence of John. It's 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 more bassy and trebly than yeah, a strat, isn't hey, it? Absolutely. <laughs>
Sorry, supposed to be talking about the overdrive pedal. All I can do is struggle to play this guitar. Uh, so how much overdrive does it have then? And okay. I'll switch to the strap because if I feel more comfortable on that. Yeah. Killer. You can see why that's so All popular. All the rumors are true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that, that's amazing. I mean, that sounded like a hairy ass telly <laughs> through a little amp breaking, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that kind of sibilancy top, chewiness on the strap. Yeah, I guess that's going to be making more of an appearance, isn't it, with us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, so, it's, but, to be honest, there's not a duffer. We need some more time with the White Rabbit. Yeah. Because I think it's a different brain space mm. um, if I was tracking guitars and I wanted colour yeah. and character and bigness not an overdrive pedal sound something like that is invaluable yep. um, there's a reason that these are all sought after you know funnily enough that they're not um similar you know there may be a few things but they they really sound different from each other they've each got their own thing going on it is I mean I can imagine everybody watching going oh my god not another blooming one two three four five <laughs> six overdrive pedals I need to buy <laughs> yeah like six to add to the six thousand that already exist what the you know what the hell do yeah. you buy where do you go the f I, I suppose the truth of the matter is everything is available yeah so any any combination of gain, tone, compression, feel, well, like the BBC, other overdrives are available. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's all out there, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it, yeah. even within there, you've got super massive high headroom, yep, preamp channel type thing. Yep. Uh, I think the string slinger and the light speed share some. Mm -hmm. share some ground a mm -hmm. little bit in terms of they both remind me of Fender amps right a little bit okay but properly overdrive and Fender yeah. amps and the fuller drive actually to that extent then. yeah but more the, the fuller drive adds that mega compression yeah um, and the, to it if you want to yeah sure and that bottom end yeah the the fire mist is sort of it's more marshly than Mm. You know, I have to say, I've always liked is because you know that point where an overdrive pedal becomes a distortion. Yes, I'm not, I don't know how to define that, but um, Yuki did one called a Heat Blaster. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Orange, yeah, and, and it's just because distortion pedals for me for years I was really struggled with, right? Because I didn't want distortion, I wanted fat overdrive, you know, a lot yeah, yeah, of overdrive, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that for me that sits there nicely, right. I mean, it may well be a distortion pedal, I don't know. What's yeah, yeah. the difference? The waveform shape? Yeah. It, it's... Generally with overdrive, overdrive's soft clips. Yeah. And when you get to lots of gain in that in that range, the soft clipping becomes really soft clipping and really compressed. Whereas distortion clips a bit harder, so when you add the gain, you're still getting the edges on the waves. Yeah. And you hear that... the fizz basically that they can you know the clipping um so you know overdrives will go into distortion but they'll clip softer 
um, distortions will do overdrive. You turn them down, mm. but they'll clip harder. So it's yep. just, you know, it's finding that balance. Yeah, I mean, to me, the the definer of it to me orally is one sounds edgier and grittier and nastier. There you go, there you go. And that, yep. and that, you get some edge and some grit in that, but you also get that kind of smooth, I don't know whether it's even order harmonics, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, I've got no idea, but it just, it's it's a smoothness, but with bite and with gain. Yeah. And that that is a rare place, mm. I think, before you get into that mid-scoopy, tons of gain, can't hear it territory. Yep. Aria, super flexible, um, you know, both the low and high position, uh, as far as the gain is concerned, gives you completely different shapes and com different characteristics, different applications, and then throw the compressor on top. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's cool. It's a cool inclusion. Yeah. Um, I can see... It's weird. I mean, we said it before, but humbuckers, loads of overdrive sounded great, and then with the single coils, throwing some compression in there, super usable. Fantastic. Well, we haven't done one of these for a while, Daniel. No, it felt nice. And it's been nice to go through some, some different textures. Yeah. Wonderful. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon who've uh, um, been absolute mega superstar hammer legends. Thank you guys so much. Um, also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... And this is Music of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in Australia is... Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And in the US of... A. Riff City Guitar, uh, one of their shops is in New Hope, Minnesota. Okay, fan and uh, all great people, if you're looking to um, purchase some goods, check those guys out because yep. they, um, they got good stuff. In their territories. There's more of the uh, PRS Silver Sky in another video that we're about to make. Okay. I've been intrigued by this guitar anyway. Uh, yeah, that's in another uh, another video. Fab. Uh, and the finally, pedal show store. finally, the Pedal Show Store. Um, if, you, if you like what you see... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we've got we T-shirts, we've got fridge magnets, we've got horticultural um, accoutrement, yeah. anything you can think of, head on down to the Pedal Show store. Get yourself a herb garden. There you go. Um, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Have a fantastic week. Uh, make some noise, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.